Thank you. Thank you very, very much. What a, what a tremendous privilege it is to be able to be back at Gene and I's home church now for these almost five years, Austin Cathedral, and uh, be a part of this wonderful congregation that we feel so loved and, and prayed for. And it's good, to have a, it's good to have a home church, isn't it? Somebody you can call your home church. And of course, we're honored to have Bill and Sue Hart as our pastors. And um, Darren, thank you very, very much. We love uh, Darren and Jennifer and uh, Eric and Natasha and Donna. She was here when we came. Gene and I have been coming here for 32 years. We've been coming to the church for 32 years. How many was here in 1986 when we first came? We got, we got a few of you. So uh, we've outlasted some of you. And, um, but it's an honor to uh, be here. I want to, uh, I want to share my love and appreciation for Dr. Billy Graham. Also, I, uh, I never met Billy Graham, but we have a mutual friend, Michael W. Smith, who's a very close friend of mine. And he'll be on my show, radio show in the morning, Michael W., and he'll be talking about his friendship with Billy Graham. I think he's going to sing at the memorial service uh, as well this Friday. So I believe that this could be a week that millions of people would turn to Jesus, just watching about what's going on this week with Billy Graham. So I believe it's a week of salvation for our nation. And uh, thank you so very, very much for sowing into our lives and ministry. We're very, very thankful, very, very grateful. I want Gene to come. Um, Gene and I, come on, babe. <laughs> come on, babe. Gene and I are about to celebrate 51 years in full-time ministry. And, and 57 years in full-time marriage. So... Um, Anybody, anybody believe that I'm married up? <laughs> well, it's wonderful to be in love. And uh, love the one that God has connected you to. So, Gene and I are going to pray for you. Um, we're going to pray for you right now. Because I believe the Holy Spirit is going to uh, speak a word to you. And... Um, as I was praying this morning, saying, Lord, give me a word for Austin Cathedral. Um, you know what I heard him say? He said, tell the people that I'm thinking about them today. Anybody want to say, God is thinking about me today? Do you believe that? So Gene and I, I don't want you to pray. Gene and I, we're going to pray for you. Father, we, Gene and I are so thankful for our pastors, Bill and Sue Hart. How much we love and appreciate them. I bless them um, and the team during their time in Jerusalem. What a wonderful place to be. I bless them right now. And I'm so thankful that this couple has been our friends for 32 years, a very faithful couple. And, uh, Lord, they're in a, a very small percentile of pastors that have, that have led a church for over 30 years. I bless them right now. I bless their children, their grandchildren. I bless this church. And Lord, we bless these people that are here on this Sunday morning, the last Sunday morning in February 2018. We bless them. We ask God that you bless them and uh, minister to them today. In Jesus' name. You want to bless the people? Too? You've already blessed them. <laughs> Same thing. We bless you in Jesus' name. Um, wow. Gene and I have three members of our ministry team that are here today, Joe Raglan and Ian Nelson Keeper. Y'all stand, if you will. Give our, give our ministry team a hand. Here. Okay, guys. I want you to turn to um, the book of Psalms this morning. Psalms 139. Do you know this morning that God is thinking about you? 
thinking about you. That's what he told me to tell you, that he's thinking about you. Uh, I love to take the word and I love to read it to myself. I love to read it to myself. And you'll find that there are writers throughout the word of God that simply um, spoke to God, spoke to themselves. And so I want us to take 139 and um, you, you won't even have to read the words. I just want us to read some passages to ourselves. Because I believe that everyone in this room today is going to go home with a word from the Lord. Now, I'm not going to prophesy over everybody today, but I believe today that everyone is going to have a word from the Lord today about yourself. Can you get an agreement with me on that? <laughs> I admire your enthusiasm. Psalms 139, beginning with verse 1. Are you ready? You can just look, you can look okay. You can look at me and, and let's, let's uh, speak this word over ourselves. Oh Lord, you have searched me. I can't hear you. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down. No, you're ahead of me down. <laughs> you say what I say. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Now this is a prayer to your God today, okay? You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high. I cannot attain it. For you have formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Never criticize yourself. Somebody will always do that for you. Your eyes saw my substance. Say it. Your eyes saw my substance. Being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me. When as yet there was none of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. God is thinking about you today. He knew you before you were ever born. In fact, I believe that you were designed from the very foundation of the world. You could have been born any time in history past. And you could have been born any time in history future. But here you are today. Living alive today. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. You came to this world 
designed by God. My mother was not supposed to have any children. After my sister was born 10 years earlier, the doctor had said, Mrs. Gentry, you'll never be able to have any children, any more children. You'll just have the one. But I came 10 years later. I came out of the womb of Delia Gentry, but I came from God. I came designed and assigned to be here. Even at this particular point in time. For my steps are ordered by God. And there are some of you wondering today, what about my life? Is God thinking about me? Things may not be going like you think they should. But the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And even though we go through fire or floods or waters, difficult times, whatever it may be, the Lord is with us, holding our right hand, talking to us, and thinking about us. And we have come, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to this point in time not by our choosing. I did not choose to come. But I believe that from the foundation of the world, the Lord designed me and assigned me to be here at this point in history. And you must never, ever lose sight of that. That's why that you cannot compare yourself with anyone else because you are you who you are. Because I am that I am created you. Hallelujah. And every once in a while, you need to see, pause and consider, meditate on who you are and why you are here and where you are going. And know, and know that even though you may die or when the coming of the Lord is, you got to realize that we're, we're going to spend a thousand years on this earth during the millennial reign. So we won't do it all during this lifetime. But we'll have glorified bodies to live about 1,000 years. So there's a lot going on. So we are here at this present time to live our life in the way that he has designed for us to live. And knowing, and knowing that our steps are ordered by the Lord. And knowing that he is thinking about us, his thoughts toward us are like the sand on the seashore. And that he does not want us to live a subpar, on a subpar level. I was honored several years ago to be able to go to the White House and lead prayer. And then I was invited back to the second time. And I remember at that time I was on, on, on national television. I had the, the, the guys that were there were filming and I was out, they were setting up the equipment outside of the White House before I went in to minister. And I remember as I was waiting, there was, uh, I was across the street and uh, there was a young lady caught my attention because she was feeding squirrels. And she was going in and out of this little cardboard house right across the street from the White House. So I, I was curious because she had all of these uh, uh, signs painted on her cardboard house and, and uh, anti-war and all of that. So I said, uh, excuse me, ma'am, can I, can I talk to you for a moment? She said, yeah, go ahead, because I love to interview people. I love to hear people's stories. And I said, uh, 
what are you doing? She said, I'm feeding the squirrels. I said, the, uh, what are you doing in this cardboard house? She said, well, this is where I live. I said, what? She said, I live here. I said, how long have you, how long have you lived here? She said, I've lived here for 14 years. I said, do they let, do they let you, does, do they let you stay over here? I mean, you're just right across from the White House. She said, well, they've came to Secret Service and, and others have came and tore it down my house several times, but I just put it back up and finally they just left me alone. And I was, uh, I was amazed, amused, but amazed that that was what her life was. Across the street from the White House, only maybe 125 feet from the entrance of the White House were where dignitaries, world leaders were going in and out, and she was across the street feeding squirrels living in a cardboard house. And the Holy Spirit, as I walked away, began to speak to me. That's the way some of my sons and daughters are living. They have access across the way to places that I've assigned for them, designed for them, but they're living across the street in a cardboard house and feeding squirrels. Because we, we have not seen ourselves in the manner that God sees us. He sees us as very prosperous, very influential. It makes no difference where we were born, how we grew up, how we were raised. I grew up in poverty in a little town in Oklahoma, and the poor people called us poor. Po, P-O. I didn't know that I was poor because nobody ever told me that I was poor except the poor people. And I, didn't, I thought that was quite amusing. But that's not what I was assigned to do. I lived in a little area, a little town, and I had circumstances that were not very good Jean grew up in a little town in the home of an alcoholic with 10 brothers and sisters in a very verbally abusive home, but that's not what she was assigned for. This is not what I was assigned for. But when I began to pray and when I began to realize the thoughts that God had for me and when I began to prophesy over myself and began to declare what, what God was thinking about me and begin to write those things down and begin to proclaim those with my mouth because we actually create our worlds with our words. I want to say it again. We actually create our worlds with our words. What have you been saying about yourself recently? Huh? We need to think what God is thinking about us, and we need to say what God is saying about us. How does God view us? How does God? So I began to realize that my circumstances, that was not where I was going, and that was not where I was trapped, and that's not what I would settle for. Because I realize that God takes us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And he's always in the process of setting up divine appointments and divine connections for us. For the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. The Bible said a man will make his own plans, but it's the Lord that directs our steps. And so what we do is we reduce God to some type of circumstances that we are dwelling in or we think we may be in or what somebody's opinion may be of us. And so Satan wants to entangle us and trap, and, and trap us and encroach upon our boundaries to keep us small and insignificant in our sight. And the reason the children of Israel did not go into the promised land because they saw 
they saw the giants there and they said, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. So we cannot go in. They confessed their future. We were like, there's giants there. We can't go in there. So they wandered around for 40 years. God does not want you just wandering around aimlessly trying to make it till Friday or trying to make it through another paycheck. No, there's more to it. There's more. There's more than feeding squirrels across the street living in a cardboard house. And so what we're trying to do, so many Christians, we're trying to minimize God instead of maximize God. And when we minimize God, then we minimize ourselves. That's why I've declared many times you can, whatever you see, you can have. If you can see it, you can have it. But there's some people, they just can't see it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray in a few moments that, that, that every one of you will step into some type of spirit realm where the Holy Spirit will give you a thought about yourself that you can write down and prophesy over yourself. Your eyes, David said, your eyes saw me. And in your book, they were all written. They were, the days were fashioned for me when as yet there was none of them. God designed you and fashioned you when there was nothing. Before you ever got to your mother's womb. You say, why have I gone through so many difficulties? Because you have an enemy. Because you have someone that hates you and he does not want to promote you. He wants you to minimize yourself. And how do I minimize myself? By the thoughts that you think and the words that you speak. You say, well, what about the thoughts? No, the problem is you begin to speak your thoughts about yourself. Jean has a... Uh, Gene has a relative that was uh, several years ago was leading a church in Oklahoma City. And a businessman who had never been there came with a million dollar check to give to the church. And uh, he came on a Sunday night with a million dollar check in his pocket to give. And that night, the pastor said, we are going to we're going to have a, a mission offering and we're going to have our annual missions giving. And I want everybody that will give at least $1,000 to stand. And the man that had the million dollars in his pocket, which owns, by the way, a company called, you probably have never heard of Hobby Lobby, but <laughs> he came that night to give a million dollars. And the pastor said, everybody give a thousand, I want you to stand. And after a while, he knew that was all. So he sat down, wrote a thousand dollar check and put it in the offering. When he got home, he said, the Holy Spirit said to him, I thought I told you to give a million dollars. And he said, they never ask for a million. They only ask for a thousand. So I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to some of you today, you never ask for a million. You only ask for a thousand. You never ask to go into the White House. You were just content to go into the cardboard house. So today, I'm going to pray that God will speak will speak to you and maximize your thoughts, not concerning somebody else, but concerning you. Amen. Several years ago, I was leading a, an extended revival in, in, a, in a suburb of Dallas, Texas, and, and uh, the youth pastor said to me after one of the morning services, he said, uh, Dale Ken, I have a guest from Guatemala and uh, he would like to ask some counsel from you. Do you have a few moments? And I said, yeah, bring him on back. So I went back in the, 
in the room behind the auditorium and, and uh, he sat down and he said, well, I, I'm, I'm a youth pastor and I'm a youth pastor of a small church in Guatemala and I'm having some challenges, I'm having some difficulties and just wanted to ask you what you would do from your, from your ministerial experience. So for about 30 minutes, I, I shared, well, if I was in your place, this is what I would do and this is how to handle And he just had a small youth group. So he said, well, I appreciate your time. And he got up to leave. And as he got up to leave, I said, let me pray for you. And as I began to pray for him, the spirit of, of revelation, the revelatory anointing came upon me. And I began to prophesy over this youth pastor. And I began, the, the words that I began to prophesy was exactly opposite of the, of the counsel I'd just given him for 30 minutes. Opposite. Everything I told him to do, the prophecy told him not to do. Everything I told him not to do, the prophecy said to do. Now, I believe in counsel. Don't get me wrong. I believe the Bible says the multitude of counsels are safety. But suddenly, I saw him in a different light than a youth pastor of a small church. Nothing wrong with that. We don't despise the day of small beginnings or small things or small places. But I began to see him in a maxim, a maximized way. And I began to prophesy of the things that he would begin to do for God and how God would enlarge his footsteps and how God would begin to minister to him in a most unusual way. And today, that young man by the name of Cash, Cash Luna is his name, is the leading evangelical voice in the Spanish-speaking world. I saw not long ago where he was at the Rose Bowl, and he had over 90,000 for three nights in the Rose Bowl ministering to them. What, what, what are you, what is God thinking about you at this moment? Because he is thinking about you. And he wants you to step into his thoughts for you. And maybe you're only getting a thousand because you never asked for a million. And you must understand that Satan would try to confine you to small places. To places of insignificance. To minimize you. And the way that you look at yourself and the way that you see yourself and the way that you talk about yourself. Here's what Mary said. She said, my soul, this is from Luke chapter 1, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservants. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Mary was prophesying over herself. All generations will call me blessed. Years ago, I was uh, somewhere in the mountains of Georgia, and, and suddenly the Holy Spirit began, in the middle of my sermon, he begins to give me thoughts about myself, and I, I begin to switch from preaching to prophesying. And the Lord was saying to you, Dale Gentry, and I began to prophesy some thoughts that God was having, was having to me. It literally changed the course of my life, even though I'd read Psalms 139 many, many times. So what is God thinking about you today? I believe you're going to step into some God thoughts. And when the when the enemy comes to bombard you with all kinds of negative thoughts toward you, and then he talks you in to saying those words about yourself, to try to minimize you and delete the things that God has for you. Then you can begin to prophesy those things those God thoughts about yourself. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And it was just the little towns that Gene and I grew up in, but, but I began to see myself traveling to nations of the world. And I began to declare, I'm, I'm going to travel all over the world and do great exploits for God. Nation after nation, Gene and I went to 35 nations. But today, just today, on Internet radio, I spoke to people around the world without ever getting on a plane and going there. In Scotland and Africa and in Belgium and Costa Rica. What is God doing? He's maximizing me. I don't have to get on a plane. We don't have to get on a plane anymore and fly for days. We can just fly through the air over the radio waves and over Facebook and speak to the world. Even today, I traveled all over the world. For years, it took Gene and I to go, took years to go to nation after nation after nation. But God began to give me some God thoughts that I could actually speak to nations of the world all in one day. All in one day. Because that's what God was thinking about me. Dale, you don't have to get on a plane anymore. We've flown millions of miles. I've flown two and a half million miles with American Airlines plus other airlines. I don't have to do it. I just open up the microphone and say, hello, world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because God said, I'll maximize you. It took you years to go to all those nations. Now you can do it in a day. In one day. Kibroshi kite rote. Kibrondo urabo ute. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray the prayer of faith over you today. And I believe that you're going to step into a God zone. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not talking about a gun free zone. I'm not talking about. Of some type of no smoke zone. I'm not talking. I'm talking about a God zone. I'm talking about the fourth dimension. We know about three dimension, right? Go to three dimensional movies. Put your glasses on. I'm talking about the fourth dimension, and that's a God dimension. It's called the fourth dimension. It's the dimension of dreams and visions. It's the dimension of revelation. Hallelujah. Kibronde, kibro shikite rute shikite. And I'm going to pray the prayer of faith, and you're going to step into it. Are you ready, young lady? Okay. Years ago, Gene and I were <clears throat> ministering at a church in Tulsa, right across the street from Oral Roberts University. And I woke up on a Sunday morning, and... Um, I was sick. I was sneezing so bad and coughing and sneezing and wheezing. And I said to Jean, I can't go today. There's no way that I can go preach. And she said, Dale, you can. You need people around you that will encourage you and say, yeah, you can do that. You can, you can make that. You can fix that. You can do that. You can fly there. You can preach that. You can start that. I said, there's just no way I can do it. She said, Dale, the moment... I see you at church in the moment that you step on the platform, all of that sneezing and wheezing and all that will be gone. So she prayed the prayer of faith over me, and I received that. I sat through this, the worship service, and I was sneezing. I had my handkerchief out. I was so miserable. But the moment that they called my name and I stepped on the platform, instantly it was gone, instantly. Instantly. I stepped into a God zone, and the anointing was on me, and incredible things happened on that Sunday morning. And I am proclaiming today that those of you that will receive my prayer of faith 
as Eric comes to help me. He's going to step into a God zone today. And you better have something in your hand, a pen, a pencil, an iPad, your iPhone, because I've learned that if when God says something to me, if I don't write it down, if I don't take it down at that moment, I will lose it. So sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and I write something the Holy Spirit is saying to me. Write it in a book, Jeremiah 32. Write it, 30 and 2, write it in a book. So I'm going to pray for you. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel us moving into a God zone. Now it's just us here this morning. And I don't have anything else to preach. I could probably call a lot of people out, give you a prophetic word, but I feel that this is what I'm supposed to do. I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to give you a word and you're going to prophesy that word over yourself even before we leave this building. You say, well, I'm not feeling anything. I'm wheezing and, and coughing and, and but I believe you're going to step into a God zone. I don't care how you feel right now. When I pray for you, Gene said, Dale, when I pray for you, when you step on the platform, all of that sneezing and wheezing is going to be gone. You'll be able to preach. And regardless of your circumstances, regardless of how the devil is attacking you, minimizing you, trying to delete your future, trying to take away your dreams, I understand all of that. I understand how it works. But I want you to listen to me. In 51 years that I've been preaching the gospel, God is faithful. God is faithful. Does it pay to serve God? Yes, it does. Don't give up on God. And don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. And don't give up on yourself. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every person here in this auditorium on this Sunday morning in February. I pray in Jesus' name that every person here this morning will enter into this fourth dimension, this God zone. They'll lay aside their plans for the day or what they're involved in, what they're thinking about, and they'll come into a now time. Not a future time, not a past time, but a now time. They'll not consider their circumstances. They'll not consider their lack. They'll not consider anything except you this morning. Because you can change everything in one day. In one day. It can all turn around in one day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last year I went to a Franklin Graham meeting. And there was about 8,000 people there, and I was going to broadcast live, but I was at the back of the crowd, and I was looking, and suddenly I saw this man on the front row, Aaron. And Aaron, he was one of the ushers there that day, and he ushered me right up to the platform by Franklin Graham and Governor Abbott. He had the keys in his hand. He just brought me up. Somebody has keys in your hand to open the door for you, to unlock the door for you, to take you from across the street, feeding the squirrels into the White House or any house or any place. 
So I pray for you now in Jesus' name. Just, just put your hand on your ears and say, Holy Spirit, open my ears. My spiritual ears. That I may hear your voice saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Put your hand on your eyes and say, Holy Spirit, open my spiritual eyes that I might see what you're doing in me. What you're thinking about me. Put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, open my heart that I might receive all that you have for me. All that you have for me. Thank you, Jesus. And one day, it can all change in one day. In one day. Thank you, Jesus. In one day. In one day. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come into the God zone. I command you to come to the God zone and declare God is thinking about me today. He's thinking about me. He knows me. He knows my name. He knows where I've been. He knows what I've done. But he loves me. And there's nothing that I could do that would disappoint him in me. I accept his love. And I accept his future plan for me because I know that the plan is a good plan to give me a future and a hope. So ordinarily, I'd be on the platform asking you to come and stand and pray, but no, I'm just, we just, it's just us here this morning. I'm sitting, you're sitting, you got something to write on. And I'm praying for you. Korebishe. Kibroshi kupatai. You're going to write something down. You're going to write a God thought. It may be one sentence. It may be two words. It may be one sentence. It may be a paragraph. I don't know. I don't want anybody to leave this morning without a God thought. Something you know that God is thinking about you. And whatever he's thinking about you, you can write it down. And whatever you write down, you declare that with your mouth because your words are creating your worlds. That worlds, that's not a singular word, that's a plural word. Your worlds. Doesn't have to be a whole bunch of thoughts, just a thought. Kibroshekete. Tebroshekote sekete. Thank you, Jesus. God's own, God's own. I love to pray in tongues because when I pray in tongues, I get revelation. I, many times I'll pray like this and I'll just get the interpretation. I'll just write it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is thinking about you. Natasha, you know the Lord's thinking about you today? Thank you for the birthday birthday wish I got that he's thinking about you you know he's he's saying this season is over this season is over and a new season has begun I hear the Lord saying you're going to feel light as a feather this season 
you're going to feel as light as a feather. The heaviness of the last season has been like a rock, but this season is going to be like a feather. You're going to feel light as a feather. Hallelujah. What's your name, young lady? Huh? Rita. The Lord's thinking about you today. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, what other young ladies about your age, your peers, have, been, have got to do that you haven't got to do? I hear the Holy Spirit saying that he's making up for lost time. And your progress is going to exceed their progress. And those that you have looked upon and envied them and said, I wish I could be who they are. But you're not who they are. It's not who you are. You are who you are. All right. Having a good cry is good for us every once in a while, isn't it? Write it down. Write a God thought. Write a God thought. Thank you, Lord. God thought. You write a God thought? Have you got it? Huh? Give me your hand. I have, a, I, I have a thought for you. That you're going to sign some major contracts. Major contracts. In the next 12 months, some major contracts. Going to sign your name. That's a God thought. Write it down. Write it down. Borrow some paper. Borrow a pen. Write it down. Write it down. Hallelujah. Are you writing, Donna? Okay. Expansion. Expansion. God is expanding. He's enlarging. He's increasing. I'm talking about I'm talking about you today. Hallelujah. 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 Just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. Hallelujah. A few years ago, Gene and I were ministering in Orlando, Florida, and they took us to the airport, and we went through through the doors and I could look and see that the, the security line was so long I told Gene we're never we're going to never make our flight the line is too long and I was contemplating getting back home Lord I don't want to miss this flight I don't want to go home when suddenly a security guard came up and said would you please follow me and I didn't know that she'd been in the service that morning. And she took Gene and I to the head of the line, right to the gate where you go through the security, where you put your bags in and go through. She took us to the head of the line. And I said, thank you so much. And the Lord said, this is what I can do for you. I can take you from the back of the line to the head of the line. 
I can take you from the foot of the table to the head of the table. If you can see it, if you'll, if you'll allow me to maximize. I was going to give a million, but he only asked for a thousand. Hallelujah. 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 See, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go to church and hear somebody say all the wonderful things that they've done, they've got to do. I don't, I don't want to just go hear that. I want to, what about me, God? What about me? What about me, Lord? In Jesus' name, I command you to enter the God zone. Just close your eyes for just a moment. Take a deep breath. Just close your eyes. It's just you and I here, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Maybe people that are watching today, I just, uh, I just ask you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. I intercede for you right now. It's the Holy Ghost to touch you right now. You may not even feel like praying for yourself today. I, I'll pray for you. I'm asking God to maximize you and enlarge you and expand you. I'm declaring, commanding you to prophesy over yourself a thought that God is having toward you this moment. In Jesus' name. For it's His good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to maximize and enlarge and expand your borders. Not just looking over into a big house where dignitaries are going in and out and you're feeding squirrels. No. You may say, well, that's a long time off. Well, it may be, but it could be today or it could be tomorrow. It could be, it could be in one day. Why not you? 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 Huh? <laughs> Why not you? Promotion does not come from the east or the west or the south. Promotion comes from the Lord. He sets one down and stands another one up. How's all this going to happen in your life? How's God going to do it all? I had a spiritual grandson. I met him when he was 11 years old, and he and his family started traveling with me. When he was 16, he decided he would form a band, and he started leading worship at his, at his church, but he said, I'm going to enter this contest, and he went to, to Nashville, he and his brother Jack, and they entered this contest, and they didn't win the contest, but there was a man by the name of Michael W. Smith there, and he liked those boys. He invited those boys to his home. And one of them, Leland, his brother Jack, and Michael said, I, I want Jack. Jack, I want you to meet my daughter, Whitney. And my spiritual grandson met Michael W. Smith's daughter, Whitney. And, and they got married, and they introduced me to Michael W. Smith. Do you see how God works? A little 11-year-old boy.
You don't know who's around you that God may use to open, your, open the door to your life, to your future. You just never know. But once you proclaim it, God will send people to help you fulfill your destiny, fulfill your dreams, fulfill your future. All I'm doing is encouraging you right now. Huh? I'm pouring, my, I'm pouring myself out for you, for you, for you. Because you are you. And the plan is a good plan. And the plan is still in motion.